For this morning's acknowledgement, we turn to a prayer prepared by Indigenous elders in relationship with the United Church of Canada. Creator God, we ask you to be with us. We pray for those who are ill and for those we cannot be with as closely as we wish. When we are afraid, help us to remember and be grateful for water, which gives us life, for the land, which sustains us and restores us to health. Help us to be grateful for the wisdom of elders who guide us, our young people who deserve a bright future, and our strength and resilience, which will bring us to a new day. Help our leaders to respond appropriately to the specific needs of Indigenous communities. Help us to walk compassionately with all who are ill or afraid. Help us to understand that we are all connected, that we are all relatives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we welcome the light of Christ into our worship, may this anchor us and guide us as we gather together. And it is a joy to be together. What a gift that our worship connects us across our country and our community. Welcome all to this time. My name is Reverend Maya Landell. I'm privileged to be the minister here and to serve in team. And so I'm thankful for James and Jason and Andrew for leading in worship this long weekend. And may there be room for you for rest, for you to bring yourself to this time of worship and to find God's peace here in this place. And may you be assured that you are loved and forgiven and set free, that you are known by God. And the promise of this Easter season is that Christ is risen. 
He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello and good morning. My name is Michelle and I am the Children and Families Ministry Coordinator here at Islington United Church. I now would like to invite all of our children and young ones for a time of godly play with Amy and myself following the service at 12 o'clock. You can email me at michelle at islingtonunited.org to receive the Zoom link in order to participate. We look forward to spending time with our familiar faces and extend a warm welcome to any new children and families who are interested in joining us. Thanks so much and we look forward to seeing you soon. Let's turn our attention to the scriptures. Let's look at a psalm and invite these ancient words into our moment right now. Reading from Psalm 66. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly, God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me.
And it's that steadfast love that ties us to the cloud of witnesses. Those who are on our hearts this morning that we're remembering, those we've lost and said goodbye to, those who have birthdays or anniversaries that we remember and celebrate, those whose love has shaped and molded us. And that love taught us about God's faithfulness, reminded us who we are and whose we are. And it's that love we share in this community, that love that reminds us that even though we don't think the same or vote the same or love the same, that we are all connected and that we are all trying to figure it out together, not getting it right, but making one step at a time as we follow Jesus and know him in a new way. On the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter, we remember how all of the remaining disciples arrived in Galilee. They gathered together and went to the mountain to meet Jesus. He was already there. It was good to see him, even in this new way. But what were they supposed to do now? Listen. He was talking again. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. What was he talking about? Then he said something that they could understand, but which they did not want to hear. Go everywhere. Tell my story, even this part, to everyone. Show them how to be good disciples. Tell them the story so they can become a part of it. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This was too far, too much. And then in their dismay, they hear him say, I am with you always to the end of the age. And then he was gone. As the disciples walked slowly back to Jerusalem, they knew they had been followers. Now they were to be leaders. They had been sheep. Now they were to be shepherds. They had come home for the last time. Now, they were to make a home for others. Herein lies good news. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Let us pray. God, we pause as we step into your story again. We listen for your wisdom with discerning hearts, for truths that are emerging for us in this time and this place. Between the words that are said and the words that are heard, may your word be known. Amen. My first sermon after I arrived at Islington four years ago began with the call to lean into the question, now what? It's a question I've been asking myself every day of the quarantine. Each day we ask, now what, as we live into facing this global pandemic together. What I love about this story is that within it is a strong three-point response to the question, now what, from Jesus. The first response is listen. Jesus was talking, but they weren't hearing. He asked them to listen to hear God's call or word as he had over and over again shared for them throughout their time together. Another word for this in Christian community is discernment. It's a practice. The disciples often had a communication problem. And this story reminds me that communication is rooted in relationships. Edwin Friedman talked about this emotional side of communication in his book called A Failure of Nerve. He talks about two key variables in communication, things that might block us from being able to really listen. The first is a word we've been paying attention to a lot lately. It's distance. In communication and listening, we can either be too close 
If there's no emotional space, there's no room to communicate. A parent can try like crazy to communicate the value of education or an activity with no response from their child. And then the kid comes home quoting a friend's parent or a teacher with the same message. Why? Because there's more emotional space in the relationship. And so more ability to hear the message. You might know it if you're sharing space with someone you've lived with for a while. I can have the same argument with Adam over and over. In fact, sometimes when something happens, I know what he's going to say, or I think I know, before that argument even happens. We're too close in distance to the situation to be able to listen to each other sometimes. Once we put that down, that idea that we already know what they're going to say, we can hear in another way. Distance works as well if we're too far. If we aren't well enough connected with people, they won't be able to hear you. There's not enough of a relationship if they're too far from you emotionally. And in this time, our emotional relationships are shifting because of our differences in physical distance. But at church or in a family or a work meeting, that could come up in a meeting or a time together when the person in charge of the meeting can't hear what the newest or youngest member is saying, but they can hear it from a long-time member, someone who they trust. In this time of Zoom meetings, physical distancing makes it even harder to listen. So we ask ourselves if we're too close or too far to hear. The second thing that Edwin Friedman talks about in terms of being able to listen is anxiety. Another word and experience that all of us are sharing in this time. When people go to the doctor, they can find it hard to remember what the doctor says. It's not just the medical jargon. Their anxiety is higher. They find it harder to process information. When anxiety in a family or relationship or congregation goes up, communication will be more difficult. Anxiety is like static. People simply can't hear as easily because there's more noise in the way. In a time of major transition or crisis, or as in this story, in a time of ending and facing an unknown, we need to pay even more attention to how we speak and how we listen. And don't be surprised if people act like they've never heard the message. They haven't. Because when anxiety is high, it's harder to process information. Be patient. As Jesus was patient with his disciples, having to come to them over and over, sharing a repeated message with them. It took the disciples a while to hear what Jesus was really saying. And he was patient with them. In order to answer the now what question together, we need to be able to listen with awareness of how distance and anxiety are at play. As they were in that story and time, so they are for us now. The second thing Jesus speaks into very clearly is he says, go everywhere. Tell my story, even this part to everyone. Show them how to be good disciples. Tell them the story so they can become part of it. It's the next chapter in a movement that spreads around our world. Jesus says, talk about the things that God is doing in your life right now. Where are the blessings in this story? Where's the good news that he invited them to share in the midst of the struggle? He says, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And often on this Sunday at Islington, we have shared in the sacrament of baptism. But I was wondering if you could remember your baptism every time you washed your hands. That invitation into being part of the story to share good news. Usually, we preach on this text and get excited to send people out. 
at the church that I did my internship at, the stained glass window that when the preacher preached that was at the back of the sanctuary was this story, these words, go make disciples, tell the story. So when people turned and left the sanctuary, they would see that message and be invited into sharing the good news. But what does going look like right now? When the first invitation is to stay, how do we keep going? How do we use the tools that we have right now? The disciples, all they had was the story and their feet and the ways to share it, the open road. Right now, people worshiping as part of the IUC family are hearing the story way beyond those who have sat in our pews for the weeks before our quarantine. Right now, we're finding ways to go that involve staying still. Every day, the invitation to prayer and meditation invites us to share good news in a different way. And all of those likes and comments and shares, you may have never connected them before to this story of good news. Every time you invite someone to come close to this ministry or the broader ministry, you're part of helping us move into the now what? Tell the good news. Tell the story. Pay attention to how much you're focusing on that part. And the third point, well, it's probably tattoo-worthy. Remember, I am with you always. Often we hear the King James Version, low comma, I am with you always. No matter how you're doing, be reminded that he is with us. And I love the version that James shared today because it reminds us that Christ is our home, a home in our heart, and that wherever we are, Christ dwells within us. For where you are, I am, he says, always. That's the message that matters. That's the Coles Notes shortened tattoo version of what to share. No matter the situation, no matter the decision, no matter the day or the night, there is no place, no situation that you are that Christ isn't. And that's a message we're telling. So let's go and pass it on. Spread God's love to everyone.
Friends, let's pray together. God of wisdom and love, give us patience and help us to listen. Show us how to make space for you, even as we remain connected to one another. Slow us down that we might be more attentive to your word for our lives especially when we are stuck wondering what comes next, what now. Make space in our hearts for you to enter us and center us in your will. Open our eyes to your love and grace surrounding us. Open our ears to hear you calling us to new challenges. Open our imaginations to new possibilities. And as we come to know your love more fully, God, let us be known by making you known. Equip us to pass your spark on to others. Give us strength to walk and speak boldly. And may our broken world and broken lives be transformed in your image. And may the peace of Christ be present in the midst of his disciples. We pray that you guide our footsteps, that we might share your story in the places and in the ways that you would have us. For the sake of Jesus, who is with us always, and who teaches us to pray together. Give us this day our daily bread. What an invitation to acts of generosity and gratitude. And as we answer that prayer for others, I give thanks for the ways that you have been generous in supporting the ministry that is allowing us to continue to care for our community at this time. We're stepping into new partnerships as we learn to offer the Maybell Food Program in another way. We're paying attention to the needs pastorally of our community and serving them from prayer on call to be able to reach out and gather people around common interests. May you feel part of this story as you offer your tithes and gifts. We do this each week as part of worship, not in replacement of communion, but as another way of coming to the table as church family. You're invited as you receive a musical offering and continue your prayers to offer virtually through online giving and e-transfer to office at islingtonunited.org or people are placing checks or in the mail or dropping them off at the church mailbox door. There are so many ways that we can be part of this. Worship and work are one. The offering will now be received. If 
you want me to lead, if you want me to follow, I, I will. If you want me to go, or if you want me to stay here. Let us pray. Holy One, bless our offerings and transform them into compassion for others, into community for the lonely, and hope for the church and the world. Amen. So friends, the life of the church continues, for you are the church wherever you are. We invite you to stay connected to what's happening online and join us as the postlude finishes. Just stay on the website for just a little bit longer and there'll be a time if you just scroll down a little bit and be patient, the Facebook Live message will come where we're gathering on Facebook and sharing the peace with one another so that you can be part of the moments where we light candles and honor those we've lost but also make room to gather together around joy. So that's important, that happens right after. Uh, each Sunday, the Resonance team is offering adventures for you, so I invite you to look forward to what's coming up. Um, and the website contains all of those stories with more stories yet to be written and to come. We're grateful that you've been with us today and continue to worship and share good news together in Christ's name.
to the world asking expectantly, now what? Go surrounded by the unconditional love of God and following in the way of the Christ who is with you always. And may the Spirit give you the power to pass it on. Go in peace. Amen.